Marvel Studios is back with a new comic book superhero teams, The Eternals. The epic story spanning thousands of years features a group of immortal heroes forced out of the shadows to reunite against mankind's oldest enemy, the Deviants. This is streaming on Disney Plus, and this is The Eternals on Night at the Movies on the Cross Border Interviews. Five years ago, Thanos erased half of the population of the universe. But the people of this planet brought everyone back with a snap of a finger. The sudden return of the population provided the necessary energy for the emergence to begin. How long do we have? Seven days. We're Eternals. We came here 7,000 years ago to protect humans from the Deviants. Why didn't you guys help fight Thanos? Or any war, all the other terrible things throughout history? We were instructed not to interfere in any human conflicts unless deviants are involved. By who? We need to find the others. I haven't seen some of them for centuries. Hi. Hello. This is what the end of the world looks like. At least we have front row seats. You know what's never saved the planet? Your sarcasm. We have loved these people since the day we arrived. When you love something, you protect it. What's this even made of? Vibranium? Fall collection. Ikea. So, Michael Eternals. We have not talked about this even personally. So this is going to be an interesting, probably 20 to 30 minute episode. So if you have some time, buckle up because we are ready to review the Eternals. Michael, what did you think? What was your initial thoughts on the movie? Character? overload i was so confused on who people were i still could not tell you every single character's name because like half of them went with like grecian myths and then other myths and like i and i i I didn't know any of these characters because we hadn't been introduced to them whatsoever even in passing and i just kind of reached that point halfway through the movie i'm like i don't know who anyone is I know Gemma Chan is Cersei and uh, Rob Stark is Icarus. Rob, oh. oh, Richard Madden, sorry. Rob I was like, Stark, Rob he was in Game of Thrones. As well. um, and then I knew that the little one was Sprite. And, and I knew a, Bastos. Bastos is Bastos because he was the gay one, and yes. we stand that. <laughs> we... And then I knew Selma Hayek was Ajax, and I was mad that Selma Hayek. Spoiler alert: We killed my girl off, and I'm pissed. Selma Hayek deserved better. So before we get into the movie review, I just want to make some mention of Selma Hayek's character of Ajax. Um, she is not dead. <laughs> 
she has signed on for multiple movies and TV shows as Ajax. So, well, we don't know if she's going to be like flashback or if like timeline wise, this takes place further out and she's over here. Like, we don't know none of that. True that. So, they could be they could be yanking my chain and probably bring her back in some way because this is Marvel. Nobody dies forever. <laughs> That's true. Multiverse. Multiverse of madness. That's all I can say. Overall, as, as, a, as a Marvel fan, as a comic book fan, I knew of the Eternals before going into this movie. Um, I forget her name. Chloe Zhao that's how you pronounce her last name, who directed the movie, also directed No Man Land. So if you want the most stunning, picturesque Marvel movie you've ever want to see, go see The Eternals or watch it on Disney+, Plus, which is streaming now. Um, I was disappointed about the storyline because I am an originalist when it comes to comic books. So I was kind of upset that they made a lot of changes, which I understand because of the, the, the world that we live in now, y- you make representation matter and that's where it goes. Sure. I like the storyline. I like the uh, character development. I did not think it was overload of character development. I think, uh, Oh my God, John uh, John Snow. I I only can think of his John. His, you know uh, nothing, John Snow. I, I all I get Kit Harrington. Kit Harrington. I think his character was great. I know where they're going with that. I think Cersei was great. I think uh, Angelina Jolie's character was great. I think she did. <gasps> Angelina thing. Jolie was fabulous. I she, did love Angelina Jolie, but she, I think there wasn't enough of her. Exactly. I think there there wasn't enough of her. She plays a tormented soul quite well. Yeah, hence why she won her Oscar for being a tormented soul. <laughs> um, overall, flow was good. Runtime was a little long. They could have cut out a lot of it. It was a little long. Again, two and a half hours. Yeah. I guess this is a trend <laughs> alert. Two and a half hour long movies. If you want to review a movie, it has to be two and a half hours long. Um, there were parts that I found very redundant. Uh, my husband loved the history aspect of it. The I very, did too. Like the axe, the uh, Icarus flew too close to the sun. The uh, uh, the Mexican. Oh my God! I can't even think of the the war that was going on. The Civil War that drew it stopped. Uh, and then also, spoiler alert. Sorry. And um, Babylon. There was yeah. really good stories to tell. Being a Marvel fan, my question has to be asked, the question has to be asked, and I'm only asking questions here, I'm just asking questions. The Deviants have been around since 5000 BC or 7000 BC or whatever it was, 5000 BC and BC was 2000. How did the Marvel characters of today, Iron Man, Captain America, not know about the Deviants? Because this was a big thing. S.H.I.E.L.D. must have known about them because they are well into history. So I, I'm very concerned that they've opened a very weird wedge that we're not mm-hmm. sure. I don't know if I, I agree with that because this was the Conquistadors was the last time because they said at one point the Deviants were all dead at that point that the Conquistadors came over, the last Deviant was killed, which theoretically none of the heroes would be around yet shield i don't think would be in existed yet uh, understandable and this is how we're gonna <laughs> the arguments are about to start my concern is we pass down stories from generation to generation hence why we know uh, cersei hence we know uh thena hence we know uh, uh, uh icarus. I- icarus but the deviants never made a mention so that's where my well some of the de- i mean there was the one that looked like the minotaur yeah. In Babylon, I want to say. So, I mean, I think that maybe they were always there, like the manticore. They all kind of had that manticore looking feel to them or minotaur, things like that. So I think that they more so were incorporated in other ways as the monsters these great heroes were slaying. <clears throat> okay. It could be. And I, I could be just thinking way too much into it. Because I- all of them, it felt like all of the myths show that were there were monsters that heroes had to slay like dragons and things like that and they all had that sort of and they because they all didn't look identical they all had different shapes to them they looked like different things and so it would make sense then that at least for me that they would 
pop up but not call deviance. So the so for those who aren't haven't seen it yet, this story is about the celestial sending the Eternals to uh, a planet uh, to protect them from the deviance. If you have seen any Marvel movie, I would hi- highly recommend going back to Dor- uh, Thor, The Dark World, and Guardians of the Galaxy, the very first one, because in those two movies, they make mention of the Celestials. Uh, it does. There is a throwback to Thor in this movie and a, th- a throwback to Doctor Strange within the first 10 minutes of this movie, basically. So th- you have to kind of piece this movie together. It is... Not like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, where you kind of get introduced to these characters as the story progresses. It's here's the seven characters. Here's who you're going to be cheering for. No, it was ten. Uh, ten. Sorry. Here's the ten characters. Here's who they're going to be. Che- here's who you're going to be cheering for. Understand who they are when, within the first five minutes, and that might have taken a lot of people out of the realm of understanding who these Eternals were. But for those who ha- who have read the comics and understand where Marvel was coming from, they understood who these people were. Because in the comics, Sprite is an old man. Like, is an old, old man. So the whole story of her being a her and a young child, it just was very backwards. Yeah, that doesn't, that kind of stuff doesn't, I mean, granted, I, it doesn't bother me. I, yeah. <laughs> I just... I think that they made a good decision with killing a couple of characters off and splitting them and depowering them. And that way there's less that we have to focus on. I also think with the end credit scene with our good friend, no, Mr. Styles. No, 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 no. <laughs> with our good friend. We are not Mr. talking about that. That did not happen in this. That movie. did happen. That did happen. And the sooner you face it, the sooner. And Pip. As Patton Oswald, where Patton. was that coming from? Patton Os- Oswald and uh, Star Fox's Harry Styles, I my so, mi- my mind blew. I think they're being incorporated into Guardians of the Galaxy because there's no Eternals two that's currently set on the books, written nothing as because I did extensive research after watching it to see. Because I wanted to know, because I'm like, okay, I would like to see Gemma Chan back, and I want to know what Kit Harrington is, and all that shit. There is none on the books, so I think they're because the Guardians of the Galaxy, I, many of them are like ready to go and move on, and the Guardians of the Galaxy, as a team, changed hands, as you know, so many damn times, and so I think we're gonna get some of these Eternals as Guardians in the next movie, saving their other Guardians friends, and they're gonna split off that way. Because I don't think that Druig, Athena, uh, Athena, and uh, Macus, Macus, Maracus, yes, I don't think they want to be on Earth. So I think that those three are well, going to go off, yes, and do and be guardians with maybe a couple of the characters from that. But I think that Gemma Chan and um, maybe Fastos and. Who was the other one that stayed? Balrog, your your boy, the gay boy. No, that was Fastos. Oh, um, uh, Kumal's character. Okay, yes. Uh, oh my god, I'm just looking up the list right now. Kingo, Kingo. I think those three are gonna be most likely to join the Avengers and be in an Avengers movie. For when Avengers four or five eventually comes out, I can see that. I can see there's a few things that they've set up in this movie that I know about because, yet again, the comics are quite. Give it to us. Spill the tea. Um, Kit Harrington. We all know where that's going. We all know who he was basically within the first ten minutes of uh, him saying his name. We're like, okay, we know where you're going to be. They gave a good reference to the Ebony Sword. Uh, on their ship, which is, spoiler alert, the Black Knight, which opens up how they're going to bring in vampires into this uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is how they're going to bring in Blade, which is a throwback to another mid credit scene, end credit scene for that. Uh, Mershali Ali. Mahershala. 
Mar- Mar- Mahershala Ali made a, an appearance in the movie as Blade. So I, I can see where they're going with that. Uh, with the uh, Celestials now basically pissed off at the Eternals, I can see where they're going with that. And they're going Celestials to- Celestials are the new Thanos? No. Celestials are going to bring in their big bad guy who is probably going to be Galactus. I was going to say Galactus or Yeah, Galactus is going to be probably the new Thanos, which is going to be the reason why all the Eternals are going to probably come back and be in the Avengers movies. So I mean, I, I, this is such a journey. This whole story, I love a good epic story. And I think that the the MCU is doing the like cinematic universe the best. Well, they've always done it best, right? Since I mean, they are, they are the blueprint for it essentially at this point. For any cinematic universe. And it's sad, but, and most people are only going to go to theaters now just to see MCU films. Yep. I wouldn't rank this up as my, one of my top favorite Marvel movies. No, I wouldn't either. But it's close. I I would say probably top out of 23 or 24 that have been released, I'd say top 20 at least. Wow. <laughs> so generous and kind of you with Incredible Hulk in last place. I don't even count that one. <laughs> it does count. I know. I know. Uh, so out of five stars. Okay. I'm going to start first here. I'm going to give this a four. Oh, I know I'm generous with the stars this episode. Um, while while it stuck true to the storyline of who the Eternals were, there were a few things that I was upset about. And my husband is very, very concerned that I would give it this high of a mark because he asked me right after we finished watching the movie, uh, which like we watched it the day it came out on Disney Plus what would you give him? I told him four out of five. And he goes, what? You're lying to me. You never liked it. I was like, no, I really did like it. I like the storyline. I like some of the dialogue. I like the character development of two of the characters. Cersei, Which two? Cersei's and, oh, um, Fastos. The gay one? Yeah. I like the character development there. Um, and I like how it opened up a lot of storylines that the MCU can now work on. The only reason I'm giving it a four and the only reason I'm giving this a four, and you know why I'm giving this a four, Harry Styles does not need to be in the MCU. Too late, he's included. Period, end of, well, technically Eric Bana should be in the MCU as well, but he's not, Mark Ruffalo is. It's called character change out. Edward Norton. And Eric Bana. Eric Bana was the first Hulk. Oh yeah. That's right. Well, then also, what's his name? The Spider-Man from the TV show. <laughs> what, the Japanese one? Yeah. <laughs> so I would give it a four to five. I just, I understand you want to introduce uh, to a younger generation to get them to start watching, but Harry Styles is not how you do it. And you do not cast people just for the fact that they are named. No, Harry Styles has been cast in a lot of stuff, a lot of Oscar movies. I know, but doesn't mean that he needs to be in the MCU. You just don't like Mr. Styles. I hate him. And his watermelon sugar. I think he is probably one of the worst singers in the history of the world. That's my opinion. What would you give it at a five and why there, Michael? I'd give it a three. Okay. I give it a three stars because one, you lose a star for killing my girl Selma Hayek, period. Point blank period, lose a star. Goodbye, cut off, get out. And the other star that they lost is for, it's just with so many characters and it was so, it did jump a lot too. Like I liked the history parts a lot and I liked the main storyline a lot. I almost feel like they could have been the two separate movies that we could have seen them through history and end with them splitting and then have the second movie be the current storyline. I just feel like I wanted more of them in history, just fighting the deviants. Like it, or even like a, it could have been a really great, you know, it would have been a really good TV show to introduce them and then give them the movie. And like, just have the TV show, like Hawkeye, just a couple of episodes. Each episode could be like a different time period leading up to them facing the final deviant. Like, I feel like 
th there was a lot going on from all different angles and I wanted it more like it I feel like both sides were kind of neglected a smidge okay so with that that is the Eternals Marvel's the Eternals I should say on Night at the Movies What the-